minute after. Dr. Bacher, I have a question 15. at Wake Forest. Yes. Will that class be broadcast here like the last time? Yes, it will be broadcast, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, the, yes? Yes, I know. Tomorrow, hey, this is my turn to talk now for the next 50 minutes. I know tomorrow is a football game with the University of Maryland. I will have the same problem as some of you will have in parking. However, I will not have a problem in getting into campus because I get into campus at 7 a.m. The problem for me will be getting out of campus. So those of you who are planning to come to the class just in time, please start from home an hour early. If you start from home at 5 o'clock, there is no way you will make it by 5.30. I checked the website, Virginia Tech's website. It said the scheduled classes will go on. Classes will not be canceled. So it's only the staff, like the, say, secretarial staff, they can leave at 4 o'clock without being penalized. However, faculty can stay as long as they wish. However, they, if they want to come to the campus after 5 o'clock, it can take a while because of the traffic situation. If you, but I do not know how many of you are planning on driving to the campus. Just otherwise take the Blacksburg Transit. Take BT, and then you will not have that problem. Sorry, we already scheduled it. So Katie reminded me of the difficulty, but I, I checked it with the audiovisual people this morning. I checked the VT website, and it says you can, you can continue teaching. So, so that's what we will do. The lecture will be taped. It will be available, I assume, on Friday morning on the internet. So in case you miss it, please look at it or listen to it or watch it before you come to the class on Friday. It will help you. Otherwise, it's your choice. <coughs> okay. Any technical question or any other question you have about uh, this class you want to ask? Anything else you want to ask? Yes, Professor Batra. And the yes, problem... Yes. Problem two of the homework, uh, are there no uh, surface tractions applied on the body? Uh -huh. No surface traction means the applied force is zero. Uh, is that the case? Yeah, the no surface traction means there is no applied force. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so... Again, I remind you, it's my turn to talk. So, so we were studying conservation laws, and those are the ones which every continuous media must obey. We don't have a choice. So the first one was conservation of mass, and the second one is conservation of linear momentum. My fluid mechanics colleagues, instead of saying conservation of mass, they will call it continuity equation. But in continuum mechanics, we call it conservation of mass or balance of mass, or continuity equation. These are the same thing. So linear momentum, and that's the Cauchy's first law of motion, or is equivalent to Newton's second law of motion. Moment of momentum, so that's the Cauchy's second law of motion. That says that the stressed, Cauchy's stress tensor is symmetric. And we need the initial conditions and the boundary conditions. So as we discussed on Monday, the problem with this formulation is we do not know the deformed shape of the body. And those of you who, who use finite element codes, in the codes, this set of equations written in this form are called Eulerian description of motion. 
so the code will say or the paper will say we are using eulerian description of motion that really means we are taking little x and time as independent variables so if you take little x which means the present position of a particle and time as independent variables you get the eulerian description of motion incidentally according to professor truskell this was not given by euler but it's still attributed to him so the next the the main difficulty with this formulation is that the deformed shape is not known because that's what we have to find so we rewrite these things in the reference configuration and that's what we were doing or we started doing on monday so let's assume that this part p that is shaded in the present configuration this comes from this part r0 in the reference configuration and we can say the reference configuration was occupied by the body at time 0 and the present configuration is at time t so the balance of mass again these are balance laws or bal conservation laws so the balance of mass we already learned it's rho x t j x t equal rho 0 of x and this holds in omega 0 so who will tell me what is j here i mean we have derived this equation before so what is j that symbol j we i wrote there yes the the jacobian the jacobian so what is in terms of something more familiar to you which is related to deformation so what is j equal to the determinant of the deformation gradient yeah the determinant of the deformation gradient so this j equals the determinant of f so is the determinant of f and f of course is delta x or delta little x over delta big x so if you know the deformation gradient f so if i know little x in terms of big x which of course i don't but that's the whole idea that's the whole thing to find our goal is to find little x in terms of big x or as a function of big x and time however if we knew it then we can find the present mass density from this equation so we can find rho from from this equation okay now let's write the balance of linear momentum and the balance of linear momentum says the rate of change of linear momentum equals the sum of forces acting on the body so if i am on this remember but that's in the present configuration present the rate of change of present linear momentum or the present rate of change of linear momentum so that will be then d over dt of rho and this this is v and thus so this with the wiggle is volume and without the wiggle is velocity so that equals we said there are two types of forces one is the surface traction and the other is the body force so this is body force per unit mass b is body force per unit mass 
straight to now we change the variable of integration from little x to big x we change the variable of integration from little x to big x so that we can write our balance law in the reference configuration so rho dv is rho 0 big dv then velocity i just copy and now i am putting these bars on the v for velocity for the volume or i can use d omega if you like um, that's another possibility so jessica says it's not needed so she can keep track of it so i assume all of you can keep track of it now f i is t i j n j so this term I have not transferred yet, but this one we have. So this is on R0. Plus, we do the same thing here, rho 0, B i, D v, and this is on R0. So rho d v, rho little d v is rho 0 big d v. So we have to work with this second term. So we need to work with the second term. We have transferred this one and this one to the reference configuration. So let's look at the second, this, the term with this uh, surface integral. So that's T i j n j d a. Now, n j d a, d a is the magnitude and n is the direction of the area element. Of course, n is outward unit normal, but that's the direction of the area element. So if we combine these two, we can write it as d a j. This quantity equals this one. The magnitude of the vector times the unit no, times the unit normal or times the direction vector will give us the vector itself. So that's what we wrote. Now, let us see how many of you remember what is dij, what is this quantity in terms of the reference area. And we did that, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago. We derive the relationship between area elements in the present configuration and area elements in the reference configuration. Did we do it? So now we are trying to remember what was that relation. So that relation is J. J is the Jacobian. F inverse, that is the inverse of the is the inverse of the deformation gradient j sorry l j d a l this is just blob there is nothing there okay so it was a j f inverse transpose big d a So this quantity well before I do that now what is the this is integration on what part so the the integration is with respect to d a big d a d big a so we have gone to the reference shape we have changed little d a to big d a so that means we are in the reference configuration now. Okay. 
Okay. So this quantity in the box, we denote it by T tilde. There is a free index i, so I put i here. There is a free index l, so I put l here. So this quantity in the box, we denote it by T tilde i l. Okay, those are the free indices on, on this quantity. And this is called first Piola. These are names of two persons. One is Piola and the other is Kirchhoff. And this is with two H's, H as in Harry or Howard or Hand. But there are two H's, not one. And there are two F's. I mean, many people remember two F's, but they don't remember two H. Okay. So remember, there are two H's and two F's in Kirchhoff. So stress tensor. Sometimes it's also called nominal stress tensor or engineering stress tensor. So you see either called first piola Kirchhoff, and of course when we are saying first, there will be second. And either is it's also called nominal stress tensor. or it is also called engineering stress tensor. Nominal or engineering stress tensor. So this, remember, all of this is force. So this quantity is, whatever I have put in the box, is force, is present force, per unit area in the undeformed state because this is no big DA. So it's per unit in the undeformed state. So per unit area in the reference configuration. And that's what many of you, well, that's what we did in the mechanics of deforms class. In the mechanics of deforms class, we took the specimen, we measured its width and thickness, we found the area of cross section, then we loaded it up in an instrument machine or MTS machine and found the load for every incremental elongation and divided the load, present load or present force by the original area. So what you obtained was nominal stress tensor, or like one component of this stress tensor. So that was not true stress. Okay? That was not true stress. So if I'm undergoing a surgery and my physician applies force based on the undeformed area, he might kill me. Okay? Because the undeformed area is quite different from the deformed area of the tissue. So the machine has to be properly calibrated, whether it's based on the undeformed area or deformed area, I mean, he or she should apply the proper force. Otherwise, the tissue can rupture. So it depends how delicate the part is. Okay? But generally, if they are doing surgery, you don't want anything to go wrong. Okay, so, so now let's substitute this in here. So we get D over DT of rho zero VI DV equals T IL DAL plus rho zero B I D. So what we have done is 
we have transformed this thing so we have introduced a new stress tensor based on the area elements in the undeformed state however if we roughly speaking multiply these two or if we evaluate this quantity and integrate over the undeformed area we get present force present force not the f force 10 years ago okay so now we go back and write area d the vector area as scalar times the unit vector but this unit vector is in the undeformed state so this n capital n is a unit outward normal is a unit outward normal in the undeformed state it's a unit outward normal in the reference configuration not in the present configuration kt you don't like it oh i'm going i'm sorry yeah oh. i'm going i zoned out for a second but does all of that equal that term right there or which one this one equals that okay no we are not i didn't write the second term yet okay no only this term equals that all i did was i wrote dal as da times the magnitude of the vector times the its direction then plus rho 0 bi d so that's this term did not do anything to it okay now the first term let's look at this so we have ti tilde il nl you see that first this is unit normal and second you see this l and l summed so that's of the type a dot n so now we can use the divergence theorem so if we use the divergence theorem so we get this thing is equal to delta t tilde i l over delta x l dv over the reference volume plus rho 0 bi dv over the reference volume now we can of course the left hand this term is equal to rho 0 vi dot dv this is r0 and we can transfer all the terms to one side so we can transfer all the terms to one side either left or right whichever you like is it okay so then zero equals minus rho zero vi dot plus delta t il over delta xl plus rho zero bi dv and now so what is the next step so i am basically getting into the same habit as one of my instructors had when i was a graduate student which is a long time ago so when i was taking real analysis course so he he said the same thing what is the next step Yes. Um 
what's in the parentheses is just equal to zero right. without the integral. Yeah, so this thing, yes, you are right. So this thing has to be good for every value of R0. So you can take every region R0, you can take it very small or very large, and for this thing to be true, for every R0, the integrand must be zero. So we get then rho zero, vi dot, So this is true in omega zero. So this is true in omega zero. So this is the balance of linear momentum. Our Cauchy's first law of motion is Newton's second law of motion, but it is Cauchy's first law of motion. And if you are in finite element, you are doing finite element using finite element code or doing finite element work. If you take big X and time as independent variables, you say I am using a Lagrangian. Description of motion. And we play with the English language. Instead of saying we are using Lagrangian description of motion, people say I'm using Lagrangian code. Lagrange did not give a code. I, I think he probably hated finite element work. He was a mathematician. So he, I don't think he, he did anything to do with, he had anything to do with the approximate solutions. Neither did Euler. Also, according to Trustel, Lagrange did not give this equation, and Euler did not give the other one. Actually, it's the other way around. Euler worked with this, and Lagrange worked with the what we call now Euler equation. But that's the way literature is now. So the literature calls this equation as Lagrange equation or Lagrange description of motion. It's really Cauchy's equation. So we have no balance of mass. In the reference configuration, we have balance of linear momentum in the reference configuration. The next thing is balance of moment of momentum. And instead of going through all this algebra again, to get the balance of moment of momentum, let's look at this equation. So we have Ti, we define Til tilde is J, Tij. F inverse LJ. So that's how we define the first Piola Krikov stress tensor, and this is the Cauchy stress tensor. Is it okay? Now, if you wish to write in the matrix form, J scalar. Like it's a number, 1.2, 2.3. Incidentally, if the volume of the body increases, if the volume of the body increases, like if the body expands, say I got air in my stomach, so my stomach expanded, what will be J then? J will be more than one or less than one? greater than 1. So J equals the ratio of the present volume to the volume of the same body in the reference configuration. So J equals the ratio of volumes. So to write this in the direct notation, so this J for for matrix multiplication, these summed indices should appear next to each other. And they don't, so I have to take the transpose.
So if you are writing in matrix form, you will say T tilde matrix equals J T F inverse transpose. Okay. So what is T? What is Cauchy's stress tensor then? In terms of in terms of the first Kolokrikov stress tensor. What is Cauchy's stress tensor in terms of the first Kolokrikov stress tensor? So of course I'm going to solve for this. I'm going to solve for this in terms of T tilde. So how do I do it? So I want to solve for this T in terms of T tilde. And of course, I already did 1 over J. What is the next step? Force multiplied by, by F, F transpose. So you post multiply by F transpose. So this T, no, I'm not putting brackets around it. Or, so it's T tilde F transpose. All I did is I did not put those parentheses around it. But then I am putting tilde underneath. So what is the Cauchy's second law of motion? Or what is the balance of moment of momentum? Yes? Tij equals Tji. Tij equal Tji. Or this Cauchy's stress tensor is symmetric. Which is the same thing as saying T F transpose. So the transpose of this should equal itself. If, if this T is symmetric, if this quantity is symmetric, this Cauchy stress tensor is symmetric, that means the right hand side must be symmetric too. But J is a scalar, so J doesn't um, has to, J has nothing to do with the symmetry or asymmetry. Therefore, this thing must be symmetric or F T tilde transpose equals T tilde F transpose. So this is the second law of motion in terms of the first Kolokrikov stress tensor. And KT is not happy. The first Kolokrikov stress tensor is not is not symmetric. The first Kolokrikov stress tensor we introduced here. The first Kolokrikov stress tensor is not. One doesn't work. So the first Kolokrikov stress tensor is not symmetric. So TIL does not equal TLI in general. I mean, there may be special situations where this is true, where TIL equals TLI. There may be special situations where TIL equals TLI. Like if T is if T tilde is diagonal. In a simple tension test, T will be diagonal. Or if you have a hydrostatic pressure, which means you take an object under the sea, say, say one kilometer in the, under the water, on the surface of sea water, then the stress will be hydrostatic pressure, and T will come out to be symmetric. So when I say it's not symmetric, this is what it means is in general. There may be situations, there may be special situations where the first Kolokrikov stress tensor is symmetric. But in general, it is not symmetric. Yes? I'm sorry? I was just going to ask you if it's a better. Oh, okay. 
so so the cauchy second law of motion in terms of the first peulager kopff stress tensor is this one and i already said if there is a first peulager kopff stress tensor there must be a second peulager kopff stress tensor otherwise we will not use the word first most engineers actually most mathematicians also they like to work with symmetric matrices first peulager kopff stress tensor is not symmetric the physical interpretation of the first peulager kopff stress tensor is it is present force per unit undeformed area per unit area in the reference configuration again you will have a question like this in the in the exam so you should know the difference between first peulager kopff stress tensor and the cauchy stress tensor yes josh now when we use uh, the first piola kirchhoff stress tensor in the balance of linear momentum we're still using uh, uh, our our body forces and our accelerations in terms of uh, present configuration no 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 they are all in terms of reference configuration no 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 they are all in terms of there's a row zero here so that's mass density in the reference configuration there is a row zero here mass density in the reference configuration this is present body force per unit mass and mass does not change vi dot so if you are taking big x as variable this is simple partial derivative with respect to time and if you are working in the reference configuration you really don't need the balance of mass to solve the problem because you have row zero coming here row zero coming here therefore you can find the velocity field or the displacement field without using the balance of mass and after you have solved for the deformed shape you can go back to the balance of mass and find the present mass density however if you are working in the eulerian description of motion or the present description present configuration you cannot do that you need to find the mass density because in the present configuration the balance law has the present mass density which is not known okay so the present mass density is not known therefore you need the balance of mass or you need the continuity equation okay so now let's say what is the second um, peulager kopff stress tensor because i already said there is first so there must be second but there is no third yes um, could you explain out what vi dot is is just the partial derivative of velocity with respect to time keeping big x fixed the rate of change of velocity of a material particle okay now so let's look at this uh, second peulager kopff stress tensor so what if i take this equation and pre multiply by f inverse so i pre multiply by f inverse of course i have to do both sides so i take the first peulager kopff stress tensor is written in terms of the cauchy stress tensor and i pre multiply both sides by f inverse it still has units of stress what are the units of j jacobian nothing what are the units of f so 
a very tough question, right? So what are the units of F? It's non-dimensional. Okay, it's non-dimensional. It's like you are differentiating little x with respect to big x. So it's kilometers per kilometers, meters per meters, miles per miles, centimeter per centimeter, micrometer per micrometer, whatever you wish to say. There are no units. Okay, it's non-dimensional. So the units of this quantity are that those of t, the stress. So it's pascals or pounds per square inch, both sides. T tilde as well as T have the same units. So this quantity is this symmetric, is the right hand side symmetric. If you take its transpose, you get the same thing back because the Cauchy stress tensor is symmetric. Okay, if the Cauchy stress tensor is symmetric, which we are requiring, that's, re that's required by the balance of moment and momentum, then this thing is symmetric. So we call this one, say, S. So this is definition. So we'll, we can put three lines. And this is called second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor. So this is called like second Piola Kirchhoff stress tensor. Now, of course, S is symmetric. The main problem with S is it has no physical interpretation. Even though it has units of stress, it does not equal present force over present area. It does not equal present force over undeformed area. It has no physical interpretation. So in, when you are using any code, like finite element code, 99.9999% chances are the code uses S. It works in terms of S. And after you are done, it will find, it will use this equation to find either T tilde or T. The material failure, the failure of the material depends upon the true stress, Cauchy stress. It does not depend upon the nominal stress. So if you are trying to find whether the material has failed or not, you need to find the true stress, which means Cauchy stress tensor. You do not find nominal stress tensor. Now some of you might be, might be wondering what is wrong with this guy? He, we have seen this. We have derived this equation, but I have not shown you that you have come across this equation before. So let's. So I'm going to deviate a little bit from the textbook and show you that indeed you have come across this equation before. So let's say we have a Navier-Stokes fluid, and how many of you have heard of Navier-Stokes fluid? So many of you have. So you have seen Navier-Stokes equations then. For a Navier-Stokes fluid, Tij equals minus P have you studied compressible or incompressible Navier-Stokes fluid? How many of you have studied compressed, incompressible? How many, how many of you have assumed the material, fluid to be incompressible? 
how many of you have assumed to be compressive one? So, okay. so you say incompressive. So let's assume it is incompressive. Because it, it depends whether it's compressible or incompressible. Okay. So let's assume it is incompressible. Now you assume you know the definition of incompressible now. So what's an incompressible material? What is an incompressible material? Yes, Katie, you are... Go ahead. It only has isochoric deformations. It only can undergo isochoric deformations. Isochoric means volume cannot change. If volume cannot change, mass density cannot change. Pardon me? The uh, Jacobian equals 1 then, too? The Jacobian equals 1, 2. And the pressure, this P, cannot depend upon mass density because mass density doesn't change. So this T is given by minus P delta Ij plus twice mu, mu is the shear viscosity times Dij. So this mu here is shear viscosity. So Tij, gamma j, which is delta Tij over delta xj equals minus delta P over delta xj delta Ij plus 2 mu What is the definition of Dij? Dij is strain rate tensor and that equals one half delta Vi over delta Xj plus delta Vj over delta Xi. We learned strain rate tensor. You did a homework problem also. So Dij equals one half Vi comma J plus Vj comma I and So we have J here and J here. So that will give me what? So that will give me minus delta P over delta Xi. And we are going to assume that mu is a constant. We are going to assume mu is a constant. The shear viscosity is a constant. So I can, so it's derivative with respect to X is zero. We are assuming that the shear viscosity mu is a constant. Therefore, its derivative is zero. So I differentiate this delta Vi over delta Xj with respect to delta over delta Xj. So I get this term. And then if I differentiate this, I will get, oh, there's delta Vj over delta X. I will quit in a couple of minutes. We started late, so I'll... Okay, so... Now which Josh will tell me? There are two of you here. What is this quantity equal to? The fluid is incompressible. It's zero. Because the continuity equation for an incompressible material is delta Vj over delta Xj is zero. And this is delta Vj over delta Xj, and then you differentiate with respect to Xi. So this term is zero for an incompressible material. And now if we combine all of this, 
in our linear momentum equation so we get rho delta vi over delta t plus vj delta vi over delta xj equals minus delta p over delta xi plus mu delta square vi over delta xj delta xj plus rho bi all i'm doing is substituting for delta tij over delta xj so this equation this equation balance of linear momentum reduces to what i wrote here yes josh i know does this look familiar to you or not <clears throat> i guess you did not use the index notation this is navier stokes equation for an incompressible fluid this is for an incompressible homogeneous fluid this is navier stokes equation so if so what i suggest is you go and look open your fluid mechanics book and see if this equation is the same as what is in that book there will be a homework problem like that in a couple of weeks when you will have to go to the library xerox a paper of minimum length underline each term in that paper that you have come across in this class and i will give you which journals you can look at and there will be a minimum length of paper prescribed so you cannot just take a paper of one page and say i'm done so that that homework will come so you need to underline everything that you have come across in this class so we have a class tomorrow at 5:30 No, it's okay. No, what? This is I just returned it, right? What? I just gave you back. Yeah, but then I have to give back. No, 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 not homework. No, but my grades are recorded. What's up? My name was on it. No. Oh. So I just put my name on, and now I'm giving it back. So oh, okay, okay. You can give to Lo. You know him, right? We have a one right one. Two twenty-seven. Norris. Okay. Oh yeah, the exam. Oh yeah.